Hi, I'm Garen, and I'm a Developer Relations Engineer on the Android team. Today, we're going to take a look at how to take advantage of the latest developments in Wear OS, including updates to the watch face format and the broader range of watch sizes. But first, let's review this past year. It's been transformative for Wear OS. We've expanded our device ecosystem in a major way. Top brands like Samsung and Pixel continue to offer incredible Wear OS experiences. And now, we're thrilled to have Xiaomi, Oppo, and OnePlus on board. We've continued to heavily invest in performance and power optimization. The new watches from Oppo and OnePlus are prime examples, featuring dual chipset architecture, working with the Wear OS hybrid interface to deliver battery life of up to 100 hours. We've seen our user base grow by 40% in 2023. Not only that, but we've seen adoption of Wear OS grow worldwide, with watches now actively used in more than 160 countries and regions. Adoption of Compose for Wear OS has grown 200% in the past year. Developers are taking advantage of how easy it is to use Jetpack Compose to build for the watch form factor. Recently, we've seen top apps such as WhatsApp, Gmail, and Google Calendar built entirely using Compose for Wear OS. And it's the recommended way for building user interfaces for Wear OS apps. For watch faces, the community has also embraced the watch face format with thousands of watch faces published so far, making up 30% of watch faces on Google Play. We're dedicated to continuing innovation and delivering the best possible smartwatch experiences. Now, let's dive into those latest developments. Where better to start looking into the future than with Wear OS 5? Arriving this year, Wear OS 5 is the latest version of the platform based on Android 14. At I.O. this year, we're releasing the Wear OS 5 emulator, and shortly we'll be starting our Wear OS 5 developer preview program. Give it a try today to experience the new features and get your app ready to run smoothly on watches powered by Wear OS 5. Central to our release of Wear OS 5 is continuing to enhance battery life. We've reduced power consumption for core apps like Google Maps and added support for vital use cases like navigating with public transit. Tracking your workout is now more efficient. Running a marathon consumes up to 20% less power on Wear OS 5 than on Wear OS 4. On the subject of power efficient apps, we've recently launched a guide on developer.android.com with recommendations for developers to conserve battery. Before we dive into Wear OS features, be sure to check out the talk on improving battery efficiency during your app's background work. You'll find a link in the description below. These best practices apply on Wear OS, just as they do on Android. Last year, we introduced the watch face format as part of Wear OS 4 and we're excited to bring you the next iteration of the watch face format with Wear OS 5. The watch face format is a declarative format for designing watch faces. It enables the watch face creator to construct delightful watch faces with less effort than code-based alternatives. The watch face format also makes customization a breeze with a built-in editor so that you don't have to build your own. This also provides a consistent experience for users across the platform. And the watch face format ensures great performance, making use of device-based optimizations where possible. It's been great to see what you've all been able to create so far using the watch face format. We've showcased a few watch faces from the Play Store here. To make it even easier to create watch faces using the watch face format, We've published some more resources. 
You now have full access to the XSD specification to help you build your own watch face generating tools. We've also provided validators to check your XML for correctness and memory usage. These are the same checks run by Play, so it allows you to run these checks before even submitting your watch face. In version 2, you can create flavors for your watch faces. If you've developed watch faces with Android X, you may be familiar with flavors already. Flavors allow you to group configurations together into preset values, so the user can see and select a preset from a carousel in the companion app on their mobile device. To add flavor support, just add the flavors supported and multiple instances allowed entries to your watch face info file. Then define your flavors as part of your user configurations in your watch face's XML definition. Here you can see two flavors being defined. You can give each a friendly name and a preview icon to help the user understand what it will look like. And then you set an initial value for the existing configuration options that you've defined elsewhere in user configurations, such as a Boolean configuration or a list configuration. Or set the properties of a complication slot. You might choose to show different default complications in different flavors. Next up, we've expanded the types of complications supported in Watchface format to match the full list of potential data source types. This means we have added support for goal progress and weighted element complication types. A good example of a goal progress complication is step count. There's a target value, let's say 10,000 steps per day, and then a current value, say 5,000 steps. But note also that the current value can exceed the target value. In that way, goal progress differs from a ranged value complication where the value must be strictly within the min and max bounds. You can see here the watch face format expression variables that allow you to access the current and target values. And here we've introduced a new type of stroke element, weighted stroke. This has several attributes, colors and interpolate, which when used with the corresponding expression variables, allow you to represent the color data that has been provided by the complication data source. The second type of complication we've introduced is weighted elements. Weighted elements represent discrete values. For example, it could be the percentage of time spent sleeping versus awake versus working out. The weights data can be fed straight into the weighted stroke element, as shown in this example. We've also expanded the range of data sources available in the watch face format. The largest of these additions is access to weather data. This includes a range of metrics for current conditions, including temperature, cloud cover, UV index, and of course, being from London, my favorite, the chance of rain. Let's see how this works in practice. If we take a look first at these four items here, these show the minimum temperature, current temperature, maximum temperature, and finally, the UV index. We've introduced a new expression object, weather, from which you can obtain a number of different metrics. Here you can see that we're formatting the minimum temperature for the day. Similarly here, you can reference when the weather was last updated. The existing function ICU text has been updated to allow you to format timestamps, which is very useful for weather. The weather provider in watch face format not only gives you access to weather data for the day, but also weather forecasts by day or by hour, as you can see in this example watch face. Let's take a look at how you can create these forecasts here for some of the weather data for tomorrow. 
As part of the weather expression object, the watch face format provides both hours and days objects. You can index into these as shown in this example. Here we're looking at tomorrow's forecast to get the minimum temperature and the chance of rain at night. Using XML, these new features are available now. And later in the year, you'll also see an update to the Watchface Studio to take advantage of them. Version two of the Watchface format is available starting from Wear OS 5. So you'll need to specify API level 34 for your bundle. And then specify that you're using version two of the Watchface format. Finally, as we gather momentum behind the Watchface format, we're announcing some changes to existing Watchface development options. We announced recently that only complications that are deemed safe will be available on Wear OS 5 for watch faces built with Android X or the wearable support library. This restriction does not apply to watch faces that use the watch face format. Additionally, from the end of this year, you won't be able to publish new watch faces on Google Play using the Android X or wearable support library. You'll still be able to publish updates for existing Android X and wearable support library watch faces. With the momentum surrounding Wear OS, we're seeing a wider variety of round screen sizes and resolutions, which provides more choices for the user. As developers, it's important that we check our apps to make sure they're working well on these devices and on all future devices. Let's take a look at a typical watch screen. Here, I'm using the dimensions of the small device built into the Android Studio emulator. When you then superimpose the footprint of the large device from Android Studio, you can see it's noticeably bigger in terms of area. This gives you the opportunity to show a richer app experience on a single screen. As an example, you can see here that the chip element shows more of the notifications content. So how can you ensure that the user gets the best possible experience on all sizes of screens that are available. We've come up with some principles to guide development for larger displays. First of all, make sure that your apps function optimally on the different device sizes. This applies across the app, tiles, notifications, and watch faces. As an example, if we consider this screen developed for a smaller device, what might it look like on a larger device? You can see that it's working OK. It's still usable. And visually, it's not incorrectly anchored to the top or the side. But it's not taking advantage of the extra space, and the action chip isn't placed where it should be. So the next step is to update the app to adapt to the space that is available on different devices. You can see that the app is now adapting to the space available, which makes for a more pleasant and efficient experience. Let's now look at what tools there are to help you achieve this. First up, in Compose for Wear OS, you can use device previews. We strongly recommend using these for all your development. Out the box, these screenshots let you see how your designs adapt to both large and small displays. It's as simple as adding the Where Preview Devices annotation to your Compose previews. And while on the subject of previews, be sure to also make use of the font scale previews. These allow you to see how your app's appearance changes based on which text size the user selects in system settings. Again, it's as simple as adding another annotation to your preview functions. In addition to preview testing, we'd recommend investing in screenshot testing, if you haven't already. This is another way to monitor how your app appears on large and small devices. For example, consider this screen you've developed, which you're happy with on a smaller screen. Screenshot testing allows you to automatically create images for each of the different screen sizes and resolutions you might encounter. 
and there might be quite a few. Here we're using Horologist, Google's open source project for Wear OS development, which has definitions for many real world Wear OS devices. So you can test against all of them without having to own the physical device. These tests show that a combination of a small device and a large font scale uncovers an issue. The card is anchored on the center and the corners and time indicator are now clipped around the edge of the screen. Using screenshot testing, you'll not only be able to see this issue when generating reference images, but also identify any future regressions automatically. We've demonstrated both previews and screenshot testing in our Compose Starter sample on GitHub. The sample also shows the use of responsive components and layouts from the Horologist library, which automatically adjust to the display size. So be sure to check out the link in the description. With the layout working correctly on all screen sizes in Compose, how do you then make best use of the larger screen size? In messaging apps, you can show more lines of text, or in health and fitness apps, you have space to show more data. We use a breakpoint defined at 225 dp to distinguish between a smaller screen and a larger screen. On the larger screen, we use the opportunity to show an additional metric for heart rate. Another important surface on Wear OS is tiles. Our recommended approach is to use the Proto Layout Material Library when designing and building tiles. This library provides different layouts for different use cases, as can be seen in this graphic. Not only do these layouts make it easier to build tiles in the recommended designs, but they are responsive by design, so you'll be set up well for the future. If you're already using Proto Layout Material, then you can take advantage of the responsive design by using Set Responsive Content Inset Enabled on Primary Layout and Edge Content Layout. This ensures that your content appears correctly on all device sizes and different locales. And to help you develop your tile quickly, we've introduced tile previews within Android Studio. Similar to Compose previews, this allows you to see how your tile would render on both small and large devices. You can see in this example how we show additional address information on the larger device while still ensuring a great experience on the smaller device. To use tile previews, just add the preview annotation and make use of the tile preview helper, which enables you to create a preview directly from a material layout. So how can you take advantage of this additional space in your tiles? Ideally, we'd like apps and tiles to add value on the larger devices where space allows. To do that for the larger device, we add a breakpoint in the design. This means that when the size of the display is equal or greater than 225 dp, we add extra buttons, making the tile more useful to the user. If this were a contacts tile, for example, it would give the user greater choice from the same screen. To create this tile layout with a breakpoint, we use a primary layout with a multi-button layout. You'll notice first that you use the new responsive content method. Then you add the fourth and fifth buttons only if the screen size exceeds 225 dp. Notice that the multi-button layout component automatically takes care of the optimal layout for either three buttons or five buttons, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, and one last thing before we finish. Be sure to check out the session on Android Health, where you can learn about what's new in the health and fitness space and how you can bring that to your Wear OS app. You'll find a link in the description below. For more developer and design guidance, head over to the link in the description. Thanks for watching.